Hey, Magnet Friends, I am so excited with all the response we've been getting, the comments we've been getting, and the information and suggestions. So what we're going to do right now is we wanted to come back in with video two and give you some of the information you've been asking for, and let's see how that helps us sort of zero in on what might really be causing the problem. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the actual Gauss readings off of the surface of this magnet. We're going to do some electric arc demo and see if we can repeat the process and the results with our electric arcs sparking across it. We're going to look at the composition and manufacturing and see if there's some things that we can toss out that might help you understand that better. And then one of the things that I had been wondering about is does it make a difference with the alcohol versus the silicone? And we'll look at that at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So for the first thing we want to do is get these Gauss meter readings. And so I'm going to move over to the side where we don't see any of the shiny spots just to make sure that you can see the shiny spots. We have a shiny spot here, 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 all the way dribbling across like this. We also have a streak of them running across here. We have a streak running in this direction. So I'm going to measure over here and you can see we're at 5880 and I can move around quite a bit and it stays at 58 to 5900 right in this region. So now if we go over to where this first shiny spot is, I'll take this pencil and this little wood stick and hold it down. You can see that it drops all the way down in this region where the shiny spot is, 3230 gauss, 3240. Now we'll move to the next one and we see the next one drops off not quite as much, 3350. All right, so this one gives us a 3350, 3310 and right next to it, 5600, right next to this one. 5890. Go into the next one in the middle, 5570. Uh, before we get to it, getting to it, drops down to 4000, 3700, 3450. So you can see that on this magnet, we're having these spots of decreased magnetic field. This is the other side of the same magnet. And as I measure this, it's 5640, 5700, 5800. I can move all around. We don't see any of the shiny spots. We don't see any field variations to speak of here. As high as 6050, as we get near that outer circumference, we're measuring in the 6000, 6100 range. But back in the middle, 5600. And so the other end of the magnet is fine. Now, what we're going to do is we want to run the arc test with another magnet that we know does not have this effect. So the first thing we'll get off of this is the Gauss reading. 3470, 3340, 3360. We're trying to get the Gauss reading on it. 3360, 3400, 3490. So we can see that's the range that this is, this magnet measures. We also want to see what happens when we put the iron powder on this, this really fine iron powder, and we put it on and we are not seeing any spots forming like we did with the other magnet. So we know we don't have those spots. Let's look at the other side because we're going to be looking at both sides. You see the little scratch mark in the middle? That might be an area that gives us a little bit of a difference, but no, it looks like it's staying much the same as it was. So now we know we've got a magnet that has a clean pattern on both sides. It doesn't have any of these shiny dots. It's not showing any signs of these regions. So now what we want to do is hook it up and get ready to arc this one and put some voltage across it and see what happens. So to test it for arcs, I've got two different sets of batteries to test with. This one has two 3.7 volt batteries. They may be a little under that. We'll just say this is seven volts all total on DC. I'm going to hook this up and I want to test it arcing to see whether it makes a difference with the north pole on one side or the south pole on the other side with the with the electricity. And then we're going to do the same thing with 24 volt DC power supply. We want to take a look at those arc burns and see how that looks. So let's go ahead and check that out. As you can see, the yellow lead is coming off of the negative side of the battery. And for start, the first test, I'm going to stick it to the negative side of the magnet. So it's south to south here. Now I'm going to take this and let's create an arc. I'm going to try and keep the arc on this one on one side and the North Pole one on the other. So if I come down and I touch it, we can see it throwing the sparks. And I notice that 
if I'm striking it, it creates a little bit of that effect where it creates those different spots. We're going to try and get a good spot on this. Okay, now we've got a region we can look at. Let's stop here and see what we get. As you can see, this is the spark scratch that we made with about 7 volts DC on this magnet. And this is on the north side of the magnet and we were using the, the positive side of the battery. If we put this iron powder down, you can see that over in this region, right as we started it, that's where we've got this big region. You can see we must have hit it there two or three times because it sort of made this big area that we can see. So we have seen that we can create this effect with the iron powder and by doing it with the with a with a electric arc. But let's take a look at this a little further. So now I have a 24 volt DC power supply and I hooked up the leads in reverse. This time instead of having south to south or negative to south, I have positive to south and I am going to be striking it on the top side. And we can see the sparks are much bigger and we got fire dancing around. It's a good thing we don't have the alcohol too close. Okay, so now we've got some pretty serious sparks to see what, we, what happened with this. As you can see, these are our impact points from striking it with the copper and how it bounced around. And now we're going to see how that does with the iron powder. We set it on here and you can see that's the original one that we had from the last test. But you can see each one of these dots are opening up where we saw the arc sparking. Okay, let's do that again. You can see where the spots are and we put this back on it. And once again, we see all of them putting out in the same spots. Okay, now what we're going to do is see how much the gauss level dropped in these areas. Well, we created the problem. If I look at what we started with, it doesn't make much of a spark, but it was only seven volts. And you can see it's 3,600 in the area over here. We can see areas that's down to 3,000, 3,100, 3,300, 3,500. Remember it started at 3600, but it is dropping in several of these measuring spots from what we started with. Now we'll check these spots with the 24 volts and see what they look like. So we'll check this first one that gave us the biggest spot first. And right next to it, we're getting 3670. And right on the spot, 3140, 3120. We'll go over to this next one. 3420, 3150, 3380. So you can see that we are definitely getting a decrease in the magnetic field reading at these locations. So that gives us two of the things we're looking for. We are reproducing it with a spark and we're able to see the magnetic field go down. But let's take a look at appearance because while the sparking might be working, is the sparking the same thing. Does it look the same as what we saw with the other spots? So when we're doing is taking a look at this, we have the magnet down here. First we'll start with the one that had the south pole of the magnet sticking to the, the uh, negative side of the battery and it was only seven volts. And it's hard to see, you see the little small spots here, here, and here for where we arced it. And then the little dribble line that came later is here that we see coming along here. So these, we can see the little dribble pattern that we are, that might be similar to what we were looking for. We didn't get a lot of decreased field here, but we see that. Now let's look at the second side, which had the 24 volts. And you can see with the higher voltage that we have these dots. Now notice one of the things that's very evident with the arcing is the black spots that's on here. Now we can rub this off I wanted to leave it on here so we can see that and we can see the arcing. Now we can rub this arc stuff off, but I can tell you that the surface texture is very, very rough. It's almost like sandpaper where these arc spots have melted the nickel across the top here. And so we can guess that if it's hot enough to melt nickel, that that localized heating demagnetized the material in places, in little dot places like this and like this where we were seeing the decreased field. Let's try and look at this and see from the side how this looks. If I look at this and turn it up on its side, 
like this. And we're sort of focused in. You can look and see at that distance how all of the ridges are. All of these ridges across here are from the burn marks. We did not see that on the big magnet. Those were very smooth, but you can tell here that this, by having that splatter from the, from the electrical arc, is digging in and piling up the material. We did not see that on this other one. As we can see, around this edge where the spot is, this looks more like something has been laid on top of the nickel plating rather than having a hole blown out of the nickel plating. So what we've seen is that the arc can cause the damage, but it's not matching 100% of what we're seeing. So as you can see, when I tilt the three inch magnet on its side, we see this is the spot and this is a spot and we can adjust the focus and pull each one of those into focus where our depth of field is. And you can see that those are shiny and they're dipping below the surface, not actually putting a big spot above the surface. So we're not getting exactly the same thing when we do it electrically that, we did, that, that this magnet has. So let me summarize where we're at and cover this last point. At this point, we have seen the Gauss readings and they definitely show a huge drop off. That brings up the next question, how in the world can we drop the magnetic field from 56, 5700 Gauss down to as low as 3200 Gauss in that narrow of a thickness? So it does give us two options. One, we could have reversed the magnetization and it could be canceling out. It could be making it go in the opposite direction in that local area so, in, so you're canceling out. It could be just blocking and killing the magnetic field in that very local spot and once you get a little bit above it, the field lines come back together and you really can't tell it. So it's only a very thin, shallow surface area. We looked at the uh, electrical arcs and we see that the electrical arc does indeed explain half of what we're seeing. It does give us the drop in the magnetic field that would be close to what we're getting and so that gives us a strong hint. However, when we look at the surface damage from an arc, it is nothing like what we're seeing on the surface where we have these little shiny spots. The other thing I wanted to test was, I've been doing this with alcohol because alcohol has a very low viscosity, much less, it's a little bit less than water. And then I have been using this last time, I wanted to try my silicone oil. I have some pure silicone oil, mixed up the iron powder with it. And the problem with that is, is like I figured the first time, the silicone oil has a higher, much higher viscosity. So the particles move, but they move very slowly. So it's like watching it in slow motion, but it does show us the same effect. And I wanted to get that covered. Now, so to add a little bit more information to this, I was looking through some of my older magnets to find a magnet I could work with on this, and guess what I found? I found a two inch cube, and when I went to inspect it by putting the alcohol on the surface, I found the exact same thing. Let's take a closer look. So on this magnet, you can see that it sustained quite a bit of damage in its life. I've had it for 10 years plus, and as I noticed on the surface, I wanted to see how this did, and so when I put my Iron powder on here, guess what? I see the exact same pattern that I was seeing before. So I look a little closer and you can see the same little shiny spots across here that looked exactly like they did on the other magnet and they make the same pattern. So whatever has happened to the other one has incidentally happened to this one at some point in the past and it did indeed cause the Gauss readings to decrease on this one about 1,000 to 1,500 Gauss. When we look at this, we now have a lot more information. We've tested some of the ideas that you have. Several people have mentioned something about happening in manufacturing. We looked in our warehouse and randomly tested quite a few magnets and got the idea that this is not something that's happening at the manufacturing level. And since I've got two magnets that I've had for a long time and, the, and they have a very similar pattern and they're totally different magnets, probably bought several years apart, we're not really sure what's happened here but something has that gives us the same shiny spots, the same drop in magnetic field force, but is not electrical arc. 
because we aren't seeing the same kind of damage to the nickel plating that we do. And I tried it, I wanted to try it from two different ranges, seven volts all the way up to 24 volts. The 24 volts clearly blows a big hole in the nickel plating. And the other one, it creates the little sparks and doesn't create quite as much of a decrease in magnetic field. So that gives us round two. Let's see what other ideas you can come up with now that we've got a little bit more information on this and help us solve this problem. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.